Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. AMC is preparing for an inverted stock split. Is this the truth or is it a ruse? Also, gentlemen, at the conclusion of this video and what to expect for key four numbers, as well as whether or not we should anticipate a significant run after hearing this information. Stay in place. We are going to discuss everything. Recently, retail investors have demonstrated a preference for reverse stock splits. As an illustration, consider BTB's reverse stock split. We will take a quick glance at the daily chart. It had posted four consecutive days of gains and reached a high of $11.74 on the fifth day. Now, we can also analyze whose stock seems to be moving erratically after its reverse stock split due to forced short covers. Will AMC experience the same reaction with a reverse stock split? If you asked me, guys, I would disagree. After this reverse stock split, your cost averages will be in the $200-$300 range. And based on the current state of AMC, I do not anticipate its demise. Let's say $5, make it spectacular, $50. I don't foresee AMC's share price increasing from $50 to, say, $200 or $300 following a reverse stock split, because not many individuals, especially institutions, will be ready to pay $50 per AMC share. Acceptable now, there may be some die-hard AMC apes who simply purchase the shares. However, it will put shorts in an excellent position to regain the summit of that peak. Short Position Reduction Just consider it, guys. As I've mentioned previously, I've been called the evil guy. It has been suggested that I work with hedge funds, or something equally absurd. I have previously stated that Adam Aaron is really a stock market pimp. He is the silver back of the stock market, and he is swindling shareholders to the hilt. Because following the reverse stock split, AMC will undoubtedly be diluted by AP once more. Take HE as an example. Immediately after implementing a reverse stock split, the company launched an offering, ultimately diluting its owners at these inflated prices. Consequently, if you ask me, gentlemen, I do believe that AMC could do the same stunt, given the nature of the situation. Adam Aaron, I know that a lot of people were saying that he really cared about the stock when he came to that presentation, but if he cared about the company, he would focus on sales and not on keeping shareholders in his pocket, because the only people who showed up to that presentation were people who didn't help sales at all, and that should be his main concern. As you can see, this is the effect of today's dilution in AP. This thing has been performing well this morning, and it appears likely that it will open above $2. On the downside for AMC and on the downside, this situation appears to have more negative aspects, with the possibility of a reverse stock split being discussed. I feel that many individuals are aware of this. It's an open secret that shorts will be in a fantastic position to make a ton of money on the way down because, even if AMC holds it at $5, do you honestly believe that a lot of people will pay $50 per share for AMC, which is in a dying industry? The golden age of theaters ended a while ago, as streaming began to take control. Gradually but steadily, without a doubt, COVID accelerated this process though. If you are a current AMC shareholder, I want to hear your comments on the subject in the space below, since they are quite important. I do reply to comments, so don't be bashful. On the chopping block are locals. Mullins stock. Today, we should receive the key four earnings report, and many people are pondering whether or not the company will continue to operate if positive news is received. Now, gentlemen, assuming it runs, do not anticipate a continuation of a run with certainty. As I've already stated, there may be a little increase, but the price will drop. Numerous individuals were dissatisfied with the decision to delay the vote on the reverse stock split. Not only people, but also myself. So, if we do not receive good news that pre-order sales have increased as a result of the dramatically different tours and guys with the rumors of B1 and B2 ahead of schedule, a large number of people are anticipating to hear that pre-orders have skyrocketed. In addition, Concluding this transaction with Luke improves the offer for anyone seeking to acquire commercial-sized Malayne cars. With all the strings that have been pulled and the deals that have been made, it would surprise me if Mullen did not offer us good news today. Expect the share price to decline below 20 cents before we vote on the reversal of the stock split next year, as I have stated if we do not receive a substantial amount of positive news. Now, 
Let's take a quick look at the option activity for you guys, and we'll just bring that up here. We obviously use stock tracker data, and if we look at this Friday, December 30th, there are approximately 2,400 calls that are currently in the money and approximately 62,000 calls that are currently out of the money. On the put side, there are around 27,000 in the money puts and 16,000 out of the money puts. Therefore, when you combine these figures, the ratio of calls to put requests is around 2 to 1. However, if you examine in the money options, you will notice that they are often already hedged. Right, say you purchased a call. Let's just give everyone a brief reminder. Suppose you purchased a call, right? Who will ensure that you can sell your stock at, say, a $10 call for AMC or whatever the stock's price is, right? The market makers must go out and purchase shares to hedge their holdings. Now, when you purchase a put option, who guarantees that you can sell your shares or calls? Right. If you have a $10 call and the price skyrockets, you obviously gained money on the call, but you also have the option to purchase shares at $10. Therefore, if the stock price rises to $20, correct. Because you have the right to $10, you just made a fortune. Someone must sell you those $10 shares, however. Therefore, market makers go out and purchase the necessary number of shares to be able to sell you those shares at $10 if you chose to exercise this hypothetical contract. However, they do so when these contracts are close to or begin to enter the money phase. Right. Therefore, 90 to 95% of these in the money calls and puts have likely already been hedged. Therefore, there are 27,000 profitable puts for this Friday. This indicates that there has been significantly more hedging to the downside than to the upside, where only 2,400 calls are in the money. Therefore, if you observe a move to the upward and the stock is able to break to the upside, you should buy. There will be rapid hedging on the upside, at least on the put side, and rapid hedging on the call side. Both are types of purchasing power. When puts become worthless, this is a form of purchasing power. As you are aware, when calls fall into the money, market makers must buy stock to hedge out the options. This is also known as a gamma squeeze or as a potential cause of a gamma squeeze. Therefore, gentlemen, the downside risk is this 52-week low of $4.11 per share that we established on Thursday. Please share your comments and opinions in the section provided below. How do you feel about the CEO of Mullen delaying the date another again? Due to the fact that Mullen has not yet demonstrated any consistency in meeting deadlines, the key four result is due to be released today. We do not know when time it will be announced, but once it does, expect the news to fluctuate. You anticipate the share price to vary before claiming certainty. Therefore, gentlemen, if you agree with anything I said in this video, could you please give it a thumbs up? Additionally, if you're new to the channel, you should consider clicking the subscribe button and ensuring that all post notifications are enabled. Additionally, you will be notified each time I create one of these films and make the games available to you. Thanks for watching, goodbye.